Amen. Praise the Lord, not the man. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. We are grateful. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We are grateful. Full to bring us one more time into his house where is on us, uh, where we are together as the holy family of God. Hallelujah. It is a great privilege. It is a great honor every time we come before the presence of the Lord. And when we can come before him, I know that there is a blessing that is always waiting for us as his children because he says, gather my saints unto me. And when he every time we come calling on his name, there's always something he wants to be on his children. So it is left for us now to be humble and to be active. And I pray that the Lord will move upon our hearts and help us receive whatever he has in store for us tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. To welcome us all from all the zones, from zone one to zone six. And if you're invited tonight, you heard that invitation. I pray the great blessing of the Lord be bestowed and released upon you, Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor Oni. Thank you, our chorister that has already taken us through. God bless you all and more grace in Jesus' name. I'm going to continue. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, another bit of training to the last time that um, it was done. Um, I was in London, but we are together and I was able to put my hand on uh, some of the information that I wanted to talk. And it's very, very timely, in my opinion tonight, that uh, these areas that select uh, this cost will be beneficial to every single one. Amen. Uh, please feel free to take your notepad out and jot down one or two things and I pray the Lord will help us to be clarified in any area that we're seeking. For this information it will be great insight onto us if we don't already know that's why we are here. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I want to bless and honor you for gathering us, your children, before you tonight. I give you praise. I give you, give you adoration and I give you thanks. Thank you, God, for the congregation of the upright, for this congregation of the holy, the family here in North America. We bless and honor you. Father, wherever we are from, wherever we are, I pray, oh God, that there'll be peace upon us in our atmosphere tonight and we will be waiting for you. Father, whatever it is that you have for us, oh God, and us receptive hearts and listening ears and a willingness, oh God, to be obedient and to apply. Your name can be glorified in us and we can be more excellent and diligent in what we do and in so that you can be honored. My Father, my God, take the glory from everything that shall be said and done. Teaching our, may your name be praised now and forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. 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 Now, Amen. now, please, we can mute now. Praise the Lord. Everyone, please, we know the rules. Let us uh, apply ourselves accordingly in the name of Jesus. Please mute now uh, so that we will spend the time to listen attentively. So we began to talk about uh, good administration the last time that we were together in this training. Uh, I remember talking about rules and uh, regulations, uh, procedures and protocols, and um, you know all of these that make what we are doing looks real and well presented, man. And all of these are they organize uh, the chapter. 
hallelujah, in effective administration uh, so that we can conform and we can be unified so that every speak the same language and do the same things. Amen. Aim. Vision and activities is for all members, all of us, to accord, to have the same understanding, to arrive at the same end. Hallelujah. So uh, we have uh, we have forms, we have uh, documentation systems that uh, if we put if we really diligently put them in place and follow them, practice them. Um, and allow them to remind us we will stay the course. Amen. Um, there are many ways that we can go to remind ourselves of the information that's relevant. And uh, the last time I remember using this one DVD over and over, you know, saying it all, the main foundational DVD message where you can go and find structure and as it relates to this ministry is called the operation and composition. Revival. If you have not watched it and you're a member of this ministry, I'm going to ask you to please take some time out to watch that DVD, to listen to it tatively, reflectively, so that you can um, apply yourself in the areas to, um, where that concerns you. Amen. As a member, as a leader, as, a, as it concerns you, you will have better understanding so you will know how to um, function. Hallelujah. There is also another DVD that you do, and uh, that one is called Administration in Holiness. Especially if you're a, if you're a worker, I would suggest that you make sure that you listen to that one. It will help. And uh, there is another one, which is called the roles of leaders. And that breaks down the structure and help us to understand what it shows for each person who functions in a particular capacity or a department, amen? So um, I always a good presentation. I always like to see a good tidy house. And my family knows it so, so well. Uh, an untidy house can make me personally, it can make me, bring me to a place of shouting and I try not to do that. We want to go to heaven. So I try not to shout too much. <laughs> but if the house is on, it really, really turns you the wrong way. So I like to see a good tidy house. And uh, we have to consider Zoom here as our house. Hallelujah, it's the house of us. It's the house of fellowship for us. And so Zoom needs to be tight. What we do here, we should always emphasize our behavior, our rules, our rotation, what we want to see and practice it. Uh, work on us, amen, so that we can be perfect. In this ministry, we strive for perfection. So, um, we should, when we come to uh, enable a very good presentation by the way we compose ourselves. So we sit upright, amen, and we look into the camera. And by sitting upright, I mean that, that you know, you get a good chair and you sit upright. If you really want to sleep, it's going to be difficult for you when you're, you know, um, you just lay back and slouch and do something like that because sleep will take you away. Your will take you away if you do not sit upright. Because sitting upright means that you're telling you you're focused, you're attentive. But if you just lay back and you're in the sofa and you're in one position, I'm telling you, it will make you so comfortable and relaxed that before you know it, it's your way. So in the Zoom meeting, it's not a place for your slouching or the spa. It's not advisable if you're not sitting upright. You can do that in the sofa, but not to allow yourself to be so much in a relaxed position. And we shouldn't try to 
avoid our beds because beds are personal spaces. So we should try to avoid our beds. And in our beds, we shouldn't know you're in your bed. Amen. So try to avoid that setting. They will carry you away, especially if you're tired. And also, um, a good presentation while we're on Zoom means that um, we are well clothed as well. And well clothed mean that you should not be in your dressing gown. And we say that a lot just to help ourselves. Don't wear your dressing gown and come to meeting. If I dressing gown, your dressing gown is that bathroom toilet, uh, toilet looking uh, that you cover over your private uh, underclothes. You may be going to bed and you have your nightwear under, you put on a dressing gown over it. Please don't wear that to the meeting. Amen. Cover yourself very well. So somebody may knock at your door and the way you want to present yourself very well attired, decent enough. That is how we would like you to present yourself in the meeting. I have seen persons in dressing gown. So I think it was timely that I bring it out again. Yeah. So please, no private wear. Let nobody see you in underclothes garment. No nightwear. New year, as though we're going to bed. Also, a good presentation. We are well named as well. Well named. The way that you would like to be addressed. You believe that you would like your name in heaven too. That is, that's a good uh, way of presenting self. Uh, we don't need the devices because it's not good presentation. So try. If it's a, a way that you don't know how to change it, ask for help. Ask your unit for help. Ask your coordinator for help. Ask any one of your structural leaders in the unit for help or in your same zone. Ask um, the person who have invited you to the meeting, ask them to help you, amen, let us know. And so we will bring you into training how you can adjust your name and get it set so that every time you come in the meeting, it is there and saved for you. So you have to always be changing. Hallelujah, so seek for help so that and to do things well. What is uh, naming very well? Uh, my, uh, the way that Melinda suggests that I be called is Mummy Heather, okay? I had been very comfortable over Heather, to be fair. I didn't mind Sister Heather. Mummy Linda says it's Mummy Heather. So that is how you see me doing it now, Mummy Heather, USA Campground, amen, because it's my main location, hallelujah. Uh, but for us who are daughters of the Lord, who have a like Sister Grace, um, I believe uh, that just did the wonderful worship. Uh, it's lovely the way it is, Sister Grace, and it is MD for Ireland and um, USA. Shows where we are, not just the Zoom or state where we come from, but if you're in an international meeting, then the USA will define where we are. And because we are an international body, it is very, very important that we define who we are. There's no one doing hide and seek in heaven. Everybody is known. Everybody is known. And for us to get to heaven, the Holy Ghost has to identify us. How do we identify ourselves? Let us not hide, let us put it very well. All right, and also be on camera as best as possible. Obviously, if you're in the background, uh, you're a children and they're, you know, not yet in bed, you really have to minister to them one way or the other. Be off camera for some time to attend to the children. Amen. But by all means, try to plan your activities and program in such a way that you can give time um, as best as possible without distraction to the meeting. The Lord will bless us if we put these in mass and um, execute them. Amen. Let's put our names well. Pastors or pastors, uh, for example, Pastor Ben, uh, FL for Florida, USA, perfect. Amen. Like to um, put it that way. If you're a brother, you say that. If you're a sister, you say that. Amen. Bless us when we comply that way. It just makes the house look good. It just makes the house look tidy. And then we have biblical and scriptural expectations. 
for us when we come into the house. The Bible says that as women, when we come into the house, uh, in 1 Corinthians, um, it tells us, um, when we come to pray or prophesy, our head should be covered. We don't argue with that. We don't act so, we practice that. When we pray or prophesy, we come into the house, we come into the meeting, ensure that we cover our head. And even if you're behind the camera, yes, your head must be covered. You know, the camera is not open. Your head must be covered. Hallelujah. The Bible already says that the only for the male men to be able to cover the head, the head must be uncovered when we come into the prayer. Hallelujah. So I pray that those are just some of the foundational rules that we can apply the house look really, really wonderful. Amen. Now, as it relates to camera, as it relates to camera, uh, when we open the camera, it gives a very good reflection as, as though we're in church. Amen. And uh, because when we're in church, in a real physical, it's, um, it's for real. We see ourselves, we shake hands. The Bible said, greet each other with the Holy Kiss, have good fellowship among ourselves. We see each other. There's nobody there invisible apart from the angels and, you know, um, the Holy Spirit and maybe demonic forces lurking, trying a way to come and bring some kind of uh, um, division and destruction and opposition or whatever. But we are visible people. And so because of that, when we are here, we would like us to be seen. Now, why I'm saying that is because there are sometimes that we virtual backgrounds that are um, used and we try to have them, okay? Because when we are meeting up, we are, we are um, visible. Virtual backgrounds are not real. It does not give a good reflection. It does not give a trend. It's actually quite fake. So there is no need for us to apply virtual background in this day when we come to church. Hallelujah. We mm -hmm. avoid virtual backgrounds. I'm not saying that at no time you can't use virtual background. It depends on what we in a meeting, when we come to church, when we come to fellowship, we try to avoid that. We're not hiding where we are. Why should we hide? That's deception. If you try to think that you're on the beach somewhere, on the beach anywhere, amen, hallelujah. So we try to be real as though we are in church, as we are in church, hallelujah. I want to talk about, there's some attention. I'm just doing some simple ones. These are ones we do all the time, but I just want to bring some more light onto it, more meaningful to us as we exercise them. And then I'll go to some other matters, amen. Microphones microphones let us try to use our microphone remember your device you are in control of your device yes host and the co-host can monitor and manage and control but you are primarily responsible for your device there is a microphone button there that you should use and use effectively um and other features so that you take time out to learn how to do it. And the units, please help the members how to understand, to understand how to use the features of the Zoom, yeah, so that it can be a very good looking program when we're having it. Now, microphones sometimes become a, a amen, and um, we're still struggling a little bit. Now, generally, the um, concerning our microphone is that we are muted except we are invited to speak. We are muted except for when we are invited to speak. And invited to speak means we are praying together. That's the rule because we expect us to open our minds and pray together because pray and hear each other praying, it encourages our spirits. Hallelujah. Um, but there's a, a prayer leader will say, in Jesus' name, we pray. That is the cue in her remote. That means now. And when that happens, the leader should not be struggling so much because should be listening attentively. Sometimes the leader say, in Jesus' name, we pray. And we're still praying. I know that we're on network and network disturbs. And sometimes we don't hear well, but we have to trust because of 
the nature of how we are in fellowship. Amen. So we just say that we pause. And when we pause, get in the habit of muting self. And when the leader gives the other prayer point, your mic again, because the leader will say, let's open our microphone or let's pray. And then you begin to say, amen. Let's do it decently and in order. Like over this weekend, we had some prayers, right? I think the leaders were struggling. And um, one of the reasons for that is all the microphones, or most, not all, most of the microphones were open even when the prayer point we couldn't even hear very well and we're here struggling trying to hear what is the prayer leader saying that's because our phones were open now if the microphones are closed and only the leaders mic is all will hear very very well there will be no network disturbance no muffling no buffling no nothing like that it will be much clearer so we begin to practice that at sometimes some of the leaders may mute all microphones in a bid to control things. Well, if it's getting out of hand, the, the co-host or who may mute all. And when it mutes all, even the prayer leader himself or herself may, and then the leader would then have to open to pray. But we have, or to speak, we have to begin to practice to control our microphones in such a way that it gives good presentation of ourselves. Hallelujah. Just imagine when you bring visitors to the meeting, they can't hear anything. They'll think that we're just making noise. So please let us try to um, execute this uh, microphone function as best as possible. And now there is also something as it relates to the microphones. Sometimes micro the, the, the leader's microphone becomes mute for one reason or the, the other. One of the co-hosts may mute by mistake. Now, I know we are all seeing the speaker is speaking and his mic or her mic is muted and they don't know. It's closed and they're not. So you'll find more people, not just the co-host now or the host, people, you know, just general opening mic to say, um, your microphone, we can't hear you, we can't hear you. You know, something like, that we can do. Now, our advice is the host and the co-host are there for that function. Let the host or the co-host bring out the correction or these things. Because if you find five persons yelling at the same time, we can't hear you. Your mind is not a good presentation. Let the host or the co-host do their job. Hallelujah. And the Lord will bless you. Amen. Now, so if you see that your microphone is muted, uh, the caution is do not pause. Do not take offense if your microphone is muted. It is many times because there is a sound coming from your background. You may not be quickly enough to close yourself. So we close you because that's the way to keep things in order. So do not take offense, just say, I, we thank God for the help, amen? And sometimes you may see um, the whole, you, you, uh, you're being asked to unmute. Now, if you're being mute, it, you will know whether you're being asked to unmute genuinely or not. Sometimes it's a mistake. But one host closed your mic, and then another co-host was trying to close, and they end up clicking on you, and it turns out to be asking you to unmute. It's not necessarily open your mic and speak. Really, it's just a double function, and it makes an error. So please, mic at that time, because if you're supposed to open your mic, you will know it. They will call on you, and you will know it. So the Lord bless us while we apply these. Now, another thing that is noticeable in things uh, which causes a distraction is someone comes early and someone is leaving, someone comes late rather, and someone is leaving early. If you come er late and uh, um, we expect that you, out of respect, you write to, to say that, um, I just, amen? Some, it's your heart that will make you do this, your conscience that will make you do that. Nobody Nobody's saying you, have, but some persons do that. It's okay. When you do it, do not write it to the public. 
to everyone, then it becomes a distraction. You're bringing attention to yourself. We don't need you to do right out to the host or right to the co-host or right to the coordinator. And so they is on this, but don't send it to everyone because we all don't need to know that you're just coming in the meeting. We know why you're late. And if you have to go early, we all don't need to know that you have to go early just to go to work. Just write privately to somebody who is in leadership. So the um, co-host platform or the host, so they can understand your intention. High Lord will um, guide us and bless us if we apply this. But if we do that, it takes distraction from the meeting. Can you imagine everybody is checking to see which message has come in. It's not in, you know, it, it doesn't have to do with all of us. We don't need it there. Hallelujah. Now, I move on now, and I want to go to structure. I want to go to structure. Okay, I'm being reminded now that uh, the position of our camera, it's a reminder of our camera should be on our face as best as possible. So we should ensure that if you in the sofa, we're not seeing the camera on your legs. Amen. We're seeing the camera face. And if you stand up, you adjust your camera. Amen. And when you sit again, you adjust your camera. Praise the Lord. If we do this, it is also a very good presentation. Structure, quickly, let me go to the structure of time now. I began last time to talk about structure coming uh, a single cell. Um, as in a body, uh, there is cell and organ, which we said last time. And in this ministry, how we use the same system to form our structure is uh, the units is the smallest and it is similar to the cell. And then from the units, you have group of units. You're not going to make it look like the tissues now. It's spreading. So from units to group of units and then to chapter. So then the chapter could really mean a group of units, a nation, it, or the zone, or even the region. Hallelujah, structure. And in every of these areas, there is also a workable plan that governs the upper of that place. So it is, uh, there is a, a, a system as a unit. The same system manages the group of units. The same system manages a nation. The same system manages the state. The same system manages the zone. When we use the same system, we remain in order. We remain in togetherness. And it's no diversion. Everybody is doing the same thing because it's the same thing. So the system does not start from the chapter. The system starts from the unit and it eventually gets into the larger body. Amen? Because every operation comes from the so I want us to understand that structure is necessary. Matters that will come up among believers, um, issues that will need um, third party decision uh, to restore order, to bring stability, um, to us to understand and how to remain in the laws of the Lord. So the fear of God will always be. Structure is important because one person cannot do everything. Daddy Rick Nabuja and do the work in North America. He can give counsel and, and support just like Moses did in the days of old, but he cannot do everything in every unit. And so that is why it's important to know our structure and work with our structure. Hallelujah. Um, the Bible tells us in Exodus, Exodus chapter 13, we saw where Moses had some issues and he was become so tired and it was wearing him away. And his uncle saw that, his father-in-law saw that, I meant, or saw that and gave him an advice. And um, in verse in 18, verse 21, I'm going to read it from my Bible. If you have yours, please turn to it and follow along. Exodus 
18, verse 21. The Bible says, moreover, thou shalt provide all the people, able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and such over them to be rulers of thousands and rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties and rulers of tens, and let them judge the people at all seasons. And it shall be that every great man they shall bring unto thee, but every small matter they shall judge. So shall it be easier, so shall it be easier for thyself, and they shall bear the burden with thee. Three, if thou shalt do this thing, and God command thee also, and shall be able to endure, and all these people shall also go to their place in peace. That was the advice that Father gave unto Moses so that he can be preserved to judge the way tax. He can be preserved to do more. Hallelujah. So in every year, a structure. And in every, and, and, and from that structure of maybe group of fifties and fifties, it goes into the chapter now, which is the group of 200 and it goes bigger, 500 and then the zone and, and then the, the state and then the zone and then the region. So it goes up to the hundreds then to the 500s and to the thousands. And there are different persons and leaders that are set in different strategic places to help the situation so that one person will not wear away. So, so if we follow this rule, we will do well. We will go further. We will um, achieve more. Hallelujah. Now, I want us to understand that the unit is the smallest place for growth and maturity. It's the smallest place for, for nurturing. Amen. It's the it's place where all the core values are applied. And when there, it spreads out. Amen. To the wider reach. And um, the unit leaders are there to support the members, structural leaders of the members. And then also uh, they have their senior uh, leaders as well. Now, when members are coming into the ministry, they come into the ministry, they join a unit. Members come in, members are kept, maintained, followed up, they are connected to a unit. I know that the way it is here in North America so far is like they're connected to a zone. But I am going to say unit because it ought to be for the sake of this, our teaching today, because we will go back and listen to it. And when we um, perfect ourselves and organize ourselves better, then unit will be more applicable. So when a new member comes to the, to, to the ministry, they are connected to a, whether it's like a zone as we are, you know, in our various places now. When they are connected, they are connected based on their geographical relation, not by who connected them, not by their friends, not by who they like or where they are. They ought to connect based on their geographical area. One can from Africa cannot be um, fully functional in North America. They don't live here. So they we have to now refer them to the, the unit or the chapter nearest to them. There's a coordinator over every state area by the grace of God. And there's a, a place where they ought to be connected so they could. So we have to encourage them. And that's what we say to them when we welcome them in. We will get it to the nearest chapter to you. Hallelujah. We ought to put that into practice. And that's one of the reasons we say we will tidy up, simply because we have this right. Or else anybody will feel, I like over there. I don't like like over there, I'm going to stay here. No, it's not like that. The body of Christ is not like that because the hand cannot foot. The foot have to stay where it is and the hand stay where it is. 
So there's order. Hallelujah. So um, as we have just read, there is a workforce. I can't see how much time I have left, so I can be quick. There is a workforce. According to the qualification here of Exodus chapter 18, verse 23, or actually verse 21, verse 21, there is a workforce. And it says, Jethro says to this, Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men, such an end of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers. So, so Jethro gave a criteria. Hallelujah. Jethro gave a criteria. And the criteria that Jethro gave is very, very clear here. Finds the holiness standard that should be um, in every single worker that is chosen to lead the people of God or to serve in the body of Christ. Jethro, oh, just go out there and find some men. He says there are some some behalf. There is a criteria that they should have. They should satisfy able men, such as fear God, truth, hating covetousness, and place them over the people. So that's a criteria that we need to think about. When members come and uh, when they, when you, you know, we are okay, and when we are to find um, persons to fit into the structure, we just don't find any. We just don't put our hands on anybody. Neither do we lay hands suddenly on anyone. There is a criteria. Even in the New Testament, in Acts chapter, when there was some confusion coming in the church, there was a criteria that the, that, that the Apostles, John says, we will not leave uh, the word of God to go serve, save, serve tables. Let us find um, of honest reports. Men who, um, there was a criteria, men who are full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. Hallelujah. So we can't judge people for the sake of forming a structure. Because if we just do that, we are going to mess up hearts. Hallelujah. So now we need to think about who is a worker. Hallelujah. Who is a worker in Horimo? Who is a worker? We're talking about structure. We talk about um, bringing effectiveness to, you know, the work of God in our, your unit, in, in your zone. Who is a worker? Do you have that definition? If you, uh, I can suggest that you go back to the composition and operation of Holy Remote and you will hear talk about the qualification of a worker there. Someone who is born, someone who is sanctified, someone who is committed, someone who is available to the work of God, because you cannot give the work of God people who are available to it, who are not committed to it, who are not sanctified, who are not born again. So we have to ensure that we know who is the worker. And we are using that criteria now to bring persons to serve in the body of Christ. Or else we're going to make mistakes. And before you know it, the, the unit is breaking down. The chapter is breaking down. We have placed persons into roles that are not qualified. What is the structure? The structure of any small unit is unit Leader, leader, which is the wife, a finance officer or secretary, um, evangelism leader, prayer leader. That usually is five areas, and there are more areas as well, but there are five different diff areas that makes a unit. Now, the qualification, as we have just spoken, according to verse 21, we have to emphasize here in Horemo, we emphasize that leaders be mature spiritually. Leaders be mature spiritually. That's number one. 
in addition to the fact that they're born again, they're sanctified and all that, they are mute spiritually because you cannot give the work of God to a novice. They will bring down the work of Christ. They will bring the world inside. They will bring carnality. They will bring ignorance inside. And the Bible says, um, the ignorance will make you fall. Pride goes before you and make you fall. Novice, that behavior, Satan will, you will fall. You will be deceived. So we, 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 we ask that just be spiritually mature. Hallelujah. And uh, number, by being spiritually mature, you will also now make the commitment to being available to serve. Because we cannot give you a, a, a role and you just sit down with it. Don't do anything to be available. You have to be committed. You have to be dedicated to it. You can't just take it to work every day. And then you take over time and you don't have any time to develop. You the vision to, to see the vision come to pass. You don't even have a vision. The Bible says without a vision, the people perish. So it's very important that the leaders are spiritually mature and they are available. Hallelujah. So they must meet this qualification. And especially must be paid to it because we don't force righteousness on anybody. Everybody has to develop, it has to grow in the grace that the Lord has afforded them. Amen. So here's note that um, as we're thinking about this and, and meditating on it, um, it um, is small or where the unit is small and there is not many spiritual persons that are qualified um, and, and are available. If there are not many persons in the zone or the state or your chapter, in Horimo, it is encouraged that you can use the same member, one member, as long as that one member spiritually and is available, one member can do more functions. So one member can actually have two areas of the structure because they are mature to do it and they're available to do it. But we don't give leadership to somebody who is not or who is not qualified. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Areas must be satisfied. Somebody must be praying or watching on to prayer. Somebody working on the evangelism of the unit. Somebody must be looking at the women. Somebody must be managing the secretarial and financial duties or else adequate repentance and keeping will not be kept. So someone must be able to do it. One person can do a multiplicity of functions because they're qualified and because they are available. And so um, in Horimo as well, spiritual maturity means you understand the doctrinal truths and you apply them, you live them. If we are pre preaching restitution, and you clearly have restitution to do, and you're not doing it, you're not, not spiritual. Amen. Restitution by this, I mean, is not just every restitution. I'm not talking about um, some loan that you took out and you, you know, you didn't pay it well. If you call the making arrangements for it, then you're fine. You can work. You can do God's work because you're working on your working in this area. But if you have a marriage restitution and you need to go and settle it and Start it out. You're not doing it. How can we give you the people of God when you don't believe what you're supposed to do? Marital restitution is a very, very um, keen area that in, in this ministry, in Holiness Revival Movement, we work according to the scriptures. Hallelujah. It must be satisfied. You must be working in that area to bring about the... Um, to, to bring about the righteousness in your marriage. Amen. To continue talking about structure, new members that come into the unit, to your chapter, into your state, into your zone, we're, I think the last time that we don't immediately confer upon them workmanship, immediately assign them work to do. 
They cannot just come in today. Next week, they are a worker. Where did they come from? It, 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 well, it's not like across the board, because if they come from another chapter somewhere, it's okay. If it comes from another nation and they were already there, okay. But if they are new to this ministry, they don't understand they don't understand how can you now confer upon them this kind of authority to lead confusion will come confusion will come so for you members they need to at least sit down for about three months and study and understand and learn in humility and submission so you see how they develop and see to their readiness, and then they can be appointed. Now I'm going to talk about three very key areas and the uh, main thing that I really, really want to say today. When the new member comes in, we study them, train them, help them to be built up and established in holiness before we confer authority upon them. So here is where we're going to talk about appointments. And in after appointments, I'll talk about discipline and removal. Appointments. The principle of appointments in this ministry as God all appointments must be done with and not just the super and approval approval uh, by the senior leader can you imagine if timothy decided oh he's so well alert now he go and sit on top of paul's head it was paul who confirmed approval upon Timothy after a period of training same and many of the others so there's a period of training that is necessary principle is that appointments can should only be done uh, with supervision and approval by the senior leader so for example there um uh, speaks with the coordinator first. And uh, let me explain a little bit more about this. Um, supervision really means you're in relationship with the member. That's what it means. Supervision means you know your member. Supervision means not just that you know your member, you have a relationship. You, 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 you're interacting with them. And uh, by interacting, when you're observing them. That is what supervision really is. And uh, to your counseling them, then you just come in and you're training them, you're working with them, giving them assignments, small, small assignments, and you're watching to see how they do it, respond to you, how they respond to the brethren. You're giving them small things, not general, not big. And you're checking to see how well they can function. And when they do it well, they may get a little more and a little bit more. And you're watching them in and you're checking the area, you're checking them in another so that their righteousness is complete. Supervision really, really is. And that relationship must be um, in the unit between unit leader and member before the unit. He suggests an appointment. It cannot just be because this person is always at the meeting. It cannot just be because the person can talk well. It cannot just be because the person can pray well. No, because there's a lot of passion which are out of control. And when you correct them in their passion, they will be so out of control that they will quarrel with you in a meeting and go away and offend everybody because they're not humble enough to take correction just because they can pray they can preach just because they think they know bible they're not humble enough to lead the body of christ so it's very very important that their spirits are checked 
before appointment. And before the appoint, before you even suggest it to them, you will leader and suggest it to your leader because the leader may have an observation to that person too. And the leader can now say something to you. So it's very important that your leader gets um, um, spoken to. So approval can be given before an appointment in the ministry. Um, the same applies in every level. So if the chapter will speak to the um, zonal coordinator for the zonal coordinator will do the same thing before an appointment, speak to the national coordinator first. And the national coordinator does the same thing by speaking to daddy first before an appointment. Amen. And so we'll move from there and go to discipline. Discipline in this ministry comes with the very same principle. Comes with the discipline, comes with the very same principle. Before you can give someone time out, before you can ask them to take a break, before you can ask them to stop doing that, you must speak with your senior leader. And these that are causing concern, why you feel this way, must be brought to your senior leaders so that their neutral views can play a role in judging them. And maybe they have counsel for you. Maybe they had some advice for you, but you won't know them. And they won't know that you're feeling the way you do unless you speak it out. So it's better to do that rather than to make a decision and it causes trouble in the next thing you know, the coordinator is having problems with the unit because decisions are made, but it was not passed. So it's very, very important that these uh, um, schools are practiced for conformity and uh, peace, Jethro said, so that everyone can go to their place in peace. Now, let me talk about removal now. Removal is the same principle as uh, and discipline. Of, obviously, removal is critical and it's more concerning. It's more of a tr trouble. But the same principle applies. The immediate superior is made aware before removal is done. As the unit leader, you may not be happy with someone. And uh, it is a case that they may not be cooperating anything. You're not getting along again. They're giving you bad attitude. They're just not getting on. And you can't, you, you, it's like you're threatening, you know, can't work with them and you're looking for a way to take them out. You have not spoken to each leader yet because the two of you need prayer. Two of you are going through issues. Two of you need sorting out. It's not just the one sitting there to listen to you. It's not just that one. Could be you yourself as a leader. So it's very important that the unit leader speaks to the senior leader first for intervention before any action is carried out. So I want to say that in the revival movement, removal is actually what we know as excommunication. And uh, coordinator does not usually carry out excommunication. A coordinator does that upon the intervention of our father in the Lord. And if our father is that direction, so be it. But a coordinator, that's not a coordinator decision. Excommunication is very, very critical. It's very, very serious. And so if the is brought to 
from if a, if a unit leader is having issue with a member brought to the coordinator and it's not resolved, then that matter not to the zonal leader, if it's not resolved, it's brought to the national coordinator. And if it is not, it gets to our Father in the Lord. I want us to know, as we are, we are here anyway, that when it comes to matters such as occultic practices and strange facts, <laughs> there is no tolerance. In this ministry, there's no tolerance. That matter is not, uh, can just be easily resolved. Normally, patient comes first, rather than trying to listen to the situation. Because you think with strange fires that can corrupt the whole body, that can bring down the whole church. And uh, uh, Daddy always quotes this verse to say, it's easier for one man to perish than for the whole nation. So in most cases, however, investigated, the matter is checked, and the person is called into question. The person is given time to speak. Person is given time to express self. Person is to pray, to come back with their confession. If they fail to confess, if they to uh, receive uh, the guidance that they're getting, it is an excommunication. And Pastor Rica always says, that when someone is excommunicated, it's usually not the end because they are given time. They are allowed to go. You can stay if you want to stay, but if you want to come back, pray, seek the faith of God, hear what the Lord is saying to you about the actions and the decisions that was exercised. Come back with your confession, and we will pray for your deeds. But you must be humble to accept. The Lord is uh, trying to save your soul by the action that was committed so that you will not lose this. He always says that if you do that, Jesus to receive you. If you humble, if, if, if the person humbles and confesses, now, I want to, by this, in this training, take this to give us a little bit of caution when an excommunication is uh, done. When an excommunication is done, when someone is moved from the movement, we have to take care. We have to take careful how we respond. We who have nothing to do with it, are not involved because the excommunication is to an individual. That individual is not you. You're still here, the, the, the individual is excommunicated, it's not here again. So you who are still here, the US individuals now, take caution and check very well how you respond. Um, especially when the person is very close to you, it can affect you more, but you have to be careful. So number one is that we should avoid taking offenses. Avoid taking offenses because your friend was excommunicated. Avoid taking offenses, your unit member was excommunicated. Avoid taking offenses because this is somebody from your chapter or your school. We have to avoid taking offenses because it is not personal to you. You don't know the real situation. It says offense must come, but woe to the one through whom it comes. Be careful because you may be so upset that you will escalate the matter and cause Satan to come. You have to be careful. And if you really want to protect the body of Christ, you have to be very careful how you respond to this matter because you're not the one involved. You really don't know the truth is between that individual and God. Just like it was between Judas 
Judas, Ju Judas allowed himself to be, to be sold, to be bought for money. The other disciples didn't know what was going on. Let's rise up now and start to defend Judas and saying the decision is wrong. Why has, does he hang it to the point where he hung himself? Judas was not even humble enough to repent. He went. That's why our Father in the Lord is saying, if the person would come back, or we don't know at what state it is, let that person, all you have to do is go and pray for that individual. Another point says, not just avoid taking offenses, but refrain from calling the persons. It may seem like we're neglecting and so and so. You can pray without calling. You don't have to. Give the person time. Give them time to work out their salvation with fear and pain. Give them time. Don't start to clutter and clamor their phone. Because if you, you don't know what really happened, don't, don't, don't necessarily call to find out. You don't know that. Because when you do that, you're getting yourself involved. You're getting yourself contaminated. You're getting sustained because it is in moments like this that, it, it, you know, it's like the more you're hearing, the more you become a person, especially if the person is not ready to repent. And it's a friend. It's going to rub on you. And you're going to feel like, ah, it is so unfair. You yourself feel like you want to leave. You yourself feel like you don't want to be here because that Erika is because uh, your coordinator is wrong, because this one is wrong. Be 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 up doing these things. We will start saying it's not fair. I know it. You are so upset. And the enemy starts to use you now. now. Before you know it, you start saying, you call the person. You're in your bid to console the person. You start to gossip. In your bid to console the person, you start to backbite. In your bid to the person, you start to report the unit to that person. You have to be careful. It's a very critical matter. Because we don't know at what stage, say, we don't know where that person truly is. What we should really be doing is just praying for that individual. The Bible says we owe no man nothing but love. Love to pray, to see their restoration. Phone and cry and, and tell them, no, we don't owe them that. Before you know it, you still happen in the meeting. And they weren't here and it's not their business. Be careful. Pray that the Lord will deliver them. Hallelujah. Amen. So I pray that, that we, I think my time is up now. Um, my time up? Okay. So, so I just wanted to take this brief time to explain to us um, about these areas because uh, things may be happening around us and have to be conscious and stable and keep ourselves grounded, shaken. And by shaken, we can just be swept away, carried away, move from the rock of our faith and stop believing. Let our faith be and let us um, remain grounded and apply these that we have heard and believe that we will all get to our places in peace in Jesus name. I believe that our units and chapters, our states and zones will be um, more fruitful in what we do, more effective in what we do if we apply these ideas for conveyed tonight. Hallelujah. Um, finally, in it, the database that we had we had uh, suggested some times ago for collecting the conference is coming up. We all need to do greater works this year. We want to identify you really truly ready to work for God. The skills you have, we want to capture them. We want to know them that where the needs are, we can easily fit them in. Amen. So the database on your platforms tomorrow, by God's grace. And we have them already. We'll put them out. 
please do every single one of us that are members or leaders, please encourage our members to complete it and put the air that we are interested to work, not that we just need training, but we have skills. We are able to work effectively in these those areas already, even areas where you want to learn, it's okay too. So we can group us up and work um, and prepare us for effective uh, um, uh, in North America uh, this year is so that greater works can come forth in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory for this hour of teaching. I pray that his name alone will be right and um, he will do his will and perform his good pleasure in all of us. We listen as we have heard, as we have applied. May the name of the Lord be praised, um, obedient and submissive in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we bless you you we honor you take the glory lord in what has been said and done and how your people will receive this in lord this teaching father lord to better us in what we do in our work and practice so that your name will be glorified and your house will be more beautiful i pray god that you will be up our mind you will clarify our spirit you will grant us the the right platform form to uh, the right behavior, oh Lord Jesus, to exercise, oh Lord, we will know how to function. If Father, you take the glory in all that has been said and done tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Hurimo is a non-denominational ministry given to the propagation of God's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, conferences, and the production and spread of holiness literature and materials. Pastor Paul Ricke has been mandated to raise up this great work as the international director, an anointed teacher of holiness with divine inspiration. He is the author of over 30 Christian books and many hundreds of recorded messages that can be found on the YouTube channel. Connect with us on YouTube and Facebook. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide Horimo is promoting biblical truth, righteousness, and holiness. Please join us every Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time with the Zoom meeting ID 425-964-7780 or every Monday at 10 p.m. Eastern Time ID 989-988-2681. To hear the undiluted word of God from Pastor Paul Ricker, the International Director of Horimo. The address of Horimo North America is 3776 Piney Mountain Road, Walnut Cove, North Carolina, 27052. You can telephone us on 336-251-4626 or email us at horimona at gmail.com. You can also visit the website at www.horimona.org. Welcome to Holiness Revival Movement, promoting holiness and righteousness worldwide.